Hello and welcome to a new video. So in this video, we are going to discuss selection or if statement and C. We have um, three integer variables, x, y, and z. x is one, y is three. And here you have three branches if statement. The first thing you notice is that to write the condition, we need parentheses. So in Python, we immediately just have if then the condition is written directly and see how however you need to have parentheses around around the condition and since we said in a previous video that indentation does not matter in in c we will use curly brackets to indicate that these two statements belong to the f branch again indentation is meaningless so instead of indentation we will use these two curly brackets to indicate that these two statements are part of the f statement uh, of the f branch so um, one more difference is instead of lf in python we will write else f so you need complete basically uh, complete words else and f as two separate words instead of lf and if you don't have a, a condition you will simply write else as in the third branch below again so we need parentheses to write the condition these are the parentheses for the condition we need curly brackets for to indicate a block of statement curly brackets here and curly brackets here and instead of lf we will use else f okay now as you expect when you run this code the condition here is false because y is three also the condition here is uh, sorry the condition here is true so i will print b2 when you run the code one important uh, thing to know here is when you have only one statement inside a branch. So for example, here, the second branch has one statement. The third branch has one statement. In these cases, you can remove the curly brackets. So no need for, for the curly brackets in these two cases. You run the code, still the code is correct, and you have B2. Okay, so only uh, when you have one statement in the branch, in the branch you can remove the, the curly brackets. Okay, so let's comment out this code and see our second example. In this, uh, in this example, we have x is 1, y is 3, and we have one if statement, just one branch. And below it, we have two statements. Now the question is, which one of these two statements is associated with, with the condition? When you run the code here, you notice that B11 is printed, but B1 is not printed. So we know the condition is false. So since B1 is not printed, B1 is indeed associated with the condition. So if the condition is false, it will not be executed. However, since we printed B11, we know that it has nothing to do with the condition it's independent from from the condition why this is the case because we don't have curly brackets after f when you don't have curly brackets after f what you have is you have an f statement with one um you have, or you have a condition associated with one statement of code in other words f we add the curly brackets here. In this case, all the two statements or both of the statements are part of the F um, and the condition. So notice nothing is printed because the condition is false. However, if we remove the curly brackets, if you don't have the curly brackets, then C will only consider the first statement as part of the of the if statement so only print b1 is associated with the condition this is totally independent so 
this is uh, a better indentation for this code because this statement here is independent from the statement here. Okay, so don't make um, indentation false, you know, basically, even though you see both these statements uh, below each other in the same indentation level, indentation is meaningless in C. It does not affect uh, the execution. What we care about is curly brackets. If you have curly brackets, then both statements belong to the F um, and the condition. If you don't have, then only one statement is associated with, with the condition. Let's move on to the next example. Here we have a symbol F, then F else. Now, when you run this code here, you see the following output. You see B1 and B3. Because the condition, the first condition is true. This is why I'm renting V1. And also the second condition is false. Therefore, I will go to the else branch and print B3. So what we can um, learn from this example is else here belongs to the second F. Okay. So again, since there is no curly brackets, only this print belongs um, to this F. And the else we have down below belongs to the second F. Now let's see what will uh, what is the difference when we actually write curly brackets. So this example is just the same as the one above, except that I added the curly brackets and I closed it down below. So if I comment out this, remember this resulted in B1, B3. If I run, I see that this will result in just B1. Now, why this is the case? Because the condition here is, is true. And what we have is we have these curly brackets, which indicates all of this block belong to this F. So the condition is true. I will print B1. Then I will check this condition. It's false. So I will not print B2. And the question is, should I execute else? The answer is no, because else here is associated with the first F. Okay, else is associated with the first F. Since the first F is true, the first F is true, therefore you don't execute the else branch. One more time. What we have here is we have an F statement and inside it, you have another F statement. Now, after this complete block, you have an else branch. The question is, where does this else branch um, belong to? It belongs to the first F statement. Why this is the case? Because the second F statement is is just an instead F inside the first one. So if you would like to see this in Python, it's like we are writing F condition, then inside here we write F another condition, and down below we write else. So this else here is associated with the first F. Now, how do you map this to C? Notice the curly brackets. The curly brackets start from the first F and before else, which means the else here belongs to the to the first F. Okay. Let's move on to the next example. Here we have um, two F statements, which are the same. However, the only difference is this connector. So we have two condition, x less than or equal five, y does not equal seven. And the way we connect this condition is 
by using these two different symbols. Now, the first one, this double ampersand is and, and these double vertical bar is or. So in the first case, what should be printed? Um, the condition here is indeed true. However, this is false. So if you have false, um, true and false, the entire thing is false. So I will not print this, instead I will print B2. So we have B2 in the output. Uh, on the second hand, when you have or, true or false is, for, um, is true, so I will print B1. So when I run this, I'm expecting B2, B1. Okay. Now you might uh, wonder what is the sh uh, whether this is a short circuit or not. Remember short circuit in Python, we said that if you have and, and you have the first expression is false, you don't need to evaluate the rest of the expression because false and anything is, is false. And the opposite when we have or, so we have true or, and different expression here. You don't need to evaluate the, um, the remaining of the expression because true or anything is still true. So the question is, is this short circuit or not? When we have double um, ampersand, this is yes, short circuit. When we have double vertical bar, this is short circuit. However, when we have just one ampersand, you can use one ampersand for for and or one vertical bar. Uh, in this case, this is not short circuit. So this is short circuit. In this case, no, no short circuit. However, both are correct for for um, for if statement. So even this is correct. The only difference is whether you evaluate all expression all exp expressions or not. So let's move on to the next example. And this is our last one. Um, this is something similar to Python. When we have any value that is not zero, this will be considered true. So one plus two is three, three is not zero. If I run this, I will print high uh, because any non-zero value is considered true. This is, uh, exclamation mark zero, the exclamation mark here means not. Okay, uh, so zero is considered false. However, not false is true, so I'll print hello. So when I run this, I get hi and hello. Okay, so let's summarize what we learned today. We've seen that if statements needs parentheses for, for the condition, we need curly brackets to indicate uh, the block of statement. And we also seen the uh, basically relational operator. We have and, which is double ampersand. We have or, which is vertical bars. And we have not, which is the exclamation mark. The uh, other operators are the same. so greater than, greater than or equal, less than, less than or equal, and equal, equal, and not equal are all just like in Python. So that's it for this video, uh, and I will see you on the next one.